Welcome to the Sport and Exercise Scientist. And in this video, I'm gonna give you some top tips to help you read scientific research like a pro. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about how the human body functions during sport and exercise, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of upcoming content. When you start studying at university, most of what you read is gonna be textbooks because uh, you're getting the fundamental knowledge of, of your discipline. But as you go through your studies, you switch from textbooks to reading much more what we call primary literature, which is research papers, research articles, much more specific and much more detailed knowledge of different topics. And what you might find or what you maybe have already found is that sometimes it can feel like this reading is just overwhelming. You know, the number of papers you've got to try and get through, um, the information you need to take from them. So you might think to yourself, well, why can't we keep reading textbooks? Surely they're good enough. Well, the thing with the textbook is that, first of all, it can take ages to get one out. You know, you've got to write it. You've got to get it checked and edited and then published. So it can actually take years between starting to write the textbook and actually publishing it. Uh, and of course, they're not easy things to continually update. Usually, research papers can get published much more quickly than textbooks. Uh, so the information is more current, it's able to be updated more quickly. So you're always accessing the most cutting edge stuff. And also research papers critique the information, give you the pros and cons, give you different sides of the coin, uh, and then look to further our understanding in those areas. And as you move through your university studies, you need to become more critical of the information that you read. So research papers will help you to do that. And also research papers go through a process called peer review, which means before they can be published, they are reviewed by other experts in the field to make sure that they're sufficiently good, essentially, to actually be published. So not everything can, can get published. So again, the idea with accessing research papers, primary literature, is that you're getting access to top quality, current, relevant information. Now, it's important to realise this is not a shortcut video. You can't shortcut reading. You've got to do it properly. If you don't, you're not going to get what you need to get from it, okay? But that doesn't mean to say that you can't be more effective in the way that you do it and save yourself a little bit of time as well and make sure that all the efforts you do put in are getting you the results that you want. So it's not a hack to help you do less work. A research paper is not a novel or a magazine, so don't read it like one. Your reading needs to be active, be active, be active. And what do I mean by that? You need to be aware before you start reading the research paper, while you're reading it, ask yourself before you even start reading a paper, what's my purpose here? Why am I reading this? What am I looking to get from this paper? Top tip, the answer to that question is never because my lecturer told me I need to read it. You've got to work out for yourself. What, what is it I'm trying to get from this? What's the most important message? So do not just start reading the paper from the first word all the way through to the last word and just hope that something's gonna fall into your head. It's not gonna, it doesn't work that way. Because that's gonna become a passive way of reading, like almost you're skimming the pages of a magazine. Have in your mind before you start, why it is you're reading. Keep that in mind as you go through. And at the end of the paper, check back to make sure you've actually accomplished that aim that you set out at the start. Okay, this tip, it's a bit of a secret. Come here, a bit closer. You don't always need to read all of the paper. This ties into the first tip, okay? Think about why you're reading the research paper to begin with. If you're reading the research paper as an introduction to the topic, you know, maybe you're in your first or second year of university and you're still getting used to reading research papers, you might want to read the whole paper because it's going to help you to get a good grounding in how a paper is structured, what goes into each section, how it kind of flows together. If you're a little bit further along in your studies and your volume of reading is going up and you're already comfortable with how papers are structured, you can start to become a little bit more selective in what you focus on. And it will depend on what you're get, looking to get from the paper. So let's say, for example, that you're um, doing a critical review of a particular topic and you're wanting to find out the methodological way in which uh, different researchers have approached this topic. You might just focus on reading the method sections of the papers and not worry too much about the introduction or the discussion. OK, so you're focusing on just extracting the key information that you need and making your reading efficient 
uh, by focusing on that section only. If, for example, you're doing some sort of um, comparison of results, you might focus on the results section, of course, extracting the relevant numbers and information and then comparing those across the different pieces of research that you're reading. And then later on in that process, you might go back and look at, say, the method sections of those studies. Again, what I'm reinforcing here is that you don't have to sit down and read every single word of the paper every time you read it. Goes back to the first tip. Think about why you're reading it. And when you've got that clear, think about which part or parts of the paper are going to be the most relevant to you to help you achieve that goal. So a paper doesn't have to be read like a story necessarily with, you know, once upon a time all the way through to the end. That will come more easily to you as you develop your ability to read research. So again, don't skip that. Make sure you do some good, solid reading of whole papers until you're comfortable with how they're structured and where you find the information and then become a bit more efficient in the way you approach it. Research the research. What do I mean by that? My experience of working with students is that many, many, many times uh, a student will really try to read a research paper and they'll really try to understand it, but they'll come across a part, say it's maybe a sentence or a, a paragraph or a section of the paper that isn't quite sinking in for them. But instead of stopping and thinking, what can I do to help myself understand that part of the paper? They'll skip over it and hope that that part isn't important and then they'll plow through and read the rest of the paper but it'll never quite make sense to them because they've missed out some important bits that they didn't fully understand. Okay, for example, if there's a particular word or term that you don't understand, don't skip it. Stop and look it up. Even if it's a simple Google search to understand what the term means or whatever it might need to be, do it. Understand that term, understand that word and how it fits within that paper before you move on. Even if it's just a word or a phrase, it might be really important to your fundamental understanding of, of what the paper's trying to tell you. So don't skimp on the simple things um, when you're trying to read the research. If you need to read something else in order to understand the paper, do so. You might, for example, be, be reading about a particular physiological mechanism, say the regulation of blood pressure, for example. And you're reading that and you're thinking, oh, I can't quite remember how this works. Stop. Grab, what, grab your textbook from your first year. Have a quick recap of the, the regulation of blood pressure. Refresh your knowledge. Once you've done that, go back to the paper and you'll find you're reading it with more confidence that you're going to get what, what you want from it. And this is all about making your reading more useful, okay? Actually having that purpose about why you're reading the research and making it feel like the time you're investing in the reading is doing something beneficial for your learning. This relates back to the previous one where I encouraged you to um, research the research, but make sure you don't go too far down the rabbit hole. There's loads of research in every topic. So if you're reading a particular paper and they, the, the authors say something that you think, well, that's interesting, or they reference another research paper that you think, oh, I'd like to read that. You maybe go and have a quick look at that one. And then you start reading that second paper and you think, oh, this is great. Oh, they've, they've talked about some other research here that I'd really like to read. And then you go and have a look at that research. And before you know it, you've got another 15 papers open on as tabs on your laptop. And you've only got through the first two paragraphs of the paper you're actually supposed to be reading. Um, and in no way am I trying to discourage enthusiasm and interest for your topic. That is, that's everything. That's the most important thing you can have, enthusiasm. But you can, you can go down that rabbit hole and start to really lose your train of thought and lose your focus on what it is you're really needing to be doing at that particular time. So it's really just a word of warning. I've seen students do this where they've really given themselves a lot of additional work to do and stress and just gone a bit too far down that rabbit hole at that particular time. If you see anything that you're interested in, save it. Uh, there'll be time to go back to them. And again, the only way to do this, practice. My final tip is really probably my most important one. Embrace the reading. I know sometimes you think, oh, there's so many other ways in which we consume information now. Surely something's come along to replace reading. It hasn't, especially in science. And there is no shortcut around that to get the most relevant, the most trustworthy and the most current research in your area 
You've got to engage with the research. The more you do that, the easier it becomes, the more confident you get in your critical reading, the more confident you get in knowing where to look for the information in order to develop your knowledge. So don't fight it. Learn to embrace it. Learn how to do it more effectively and more efficiently. It will become less of a chore and it will become more of a, I won't quite use the word pleasure, but it will become more of a, an important part of your, your, your studies uh, where you really realise the benefit it's having in your development. So take all these tips on board if you can. Try to employ them. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have tried these, uh, how, the, how you go with them, whether they're beneficial for you, if you've got any questions about them, or you'd like any other advice from my perspective, reading the research, then please uh, let me know in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. I'll see you again soon for another video. Take care.